Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to be talking about combining the two exponential rules that we've been learning about, the product of powers rule and the power to a power rule. Let's talk about how they can work together to solve problems. Let's just talk for a minute specifically about the difference between the power to a power rule and the product of powers rule. Okay, some students get confused about which one is which and when do we multiply exponents, when do we add our exponents. So let's try to clear that up a little bit. The power to a power rule, if you think about the name power to a power, uh, hopefully that just the name itself can help us distinguish between these two rules. Okay, what the power to a power uh, rule problem looks like is when we see an exponent on the outside of a parentheses being applied to various terms that are inside of parentheses. Okay, so a problem that applies to power to power might look something like this. 2e to the fourth, d to the third, all raised to a power. Let's just make it the fifth power. Whenever we see this parentheses with a power on the outside of the parentheses, we're going to apply the power to power rule, which means we multiply our exponents. Now on the other hand, the product of powers rule is going to look like two or more terms that have the same base number and they're being multiplied together. If we think about the name, product means multiply, and powers means we're going to have some exponents there. Okay, These terms are going to have an exponent, um, and sometimes when there is no exponent, some students like to write the exponent 1 to that base number, so they realize that even though there doesn't appear to be a number there, we always have an exponent of 1. So a problem might look like 4 to the third power times 4. Okay, And in this case, this is when we add our exponents. So 4 to the third power times 4, which means 4 to the first, would really give us 4 to the fourth power. All right, let's work out a couple of examples together where we're combining these two rules. Please write down example number one in your notes. And when we have, um, I, I see that I have an, a power to a power right here. I know this because I see this exponent on the outside, which means that third power that's on the outside is going to apply to all of my terms that are inside the parentheses. So that power to a power means we're going to have 2 to the third power times m squared to the third power. Okay, For this rule, we multiply our exponents 2 to the third power times m to the sixth power. Now, this problem also has times 4m after it right here. So this part of my answer times 4 m, and remember, m without an exponent means there is one of them. Okay, if I simplify what I have, 2 to the third power is 8 times m to the sixth times 4 times m to the first. Okay, now I'm going to group things that are alike together. All these things are being multiplied, so I'm going to take 8 times 4, which is 32, m to the sixth times m to the first. This is where our product of powers rule comes into place. These m's are the same base number, which means we're going to add our exponents. So we're going to take our 32 and multiply it by m to the seventh power. And now we're done. All right, let's go ahead and do example two. Please write this example in your notes. Okay, I'm going to break this problem down into two parts. Here's the first part. 
we have, can you guess which rule we're going to apply first here? You got it. That's the power to a power. And remember, we can recognize that because we've got that exponent of 3 on the outside of a parenthesis. Remember, that means we're going to apply that third power to each and every term inside the parentheses. So negative 3 to the third power times c to the fourth to the third power. Now, negative 3 to the third power means negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. That's going to give me negative 27. And when I apply my power to a power rule, I'm going to multiply these exponents, giving me c to the twelfth power. Okay, now this other part of the problem is what I'm going to tackle next. This also has to do, we have to do a power to a power first. So we're going to take the c term, which is really c to the first, and apply that sixth power from the outside of the parentheses. We're also going to have d to the fifth to the sixth power. Now remember, power to power means we multiply our exponents. So I'm also going to have c to the sixth power times d to the thirtieth power. Okay? Our next step is going to be to apply the product of powers rule which states that things that have the same base number when multiplied together, the base number stays the same and we add the exponents. Okay, so that negative 27 stays negative 27. c to the 12th times c to the 6th means we're going to add those exponents and get c to the 18th power times d to the 30th. And that is it. All right, let's take a look at example three. And let's make this a real doozy. All right, you know me. I'm going to break down this problem into chunks. Here's our first chunk. I'm going to have to apply the power to a power rule first because of this exponent of four on the outside. Remember that means exponent of 4 applies to everything inside the parentheses, and it looks like there's a lot. So we're going to have 2 to the 4th power times j cubed to the 4th power times k to the 1st to the 4th power times m to the 9th to the 4th power. Now I'm just going to simplify all of that stuff. 2 to the 4th power means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And that's going to give us 16. j to the 3rd power to the 4th, multiply our exponents, gives us j to the 12th power. k to the 1st power to the 4th, gives us k to the 4th power when we multiply our exponents. And we will also get m to the 36th power. That's a lot of power, people. All right, let's tackle that other part of the problem next. And when I do that, that third power from the outside of the parentheses will apply to everything. So that's going to give us 3 to the third power times j to the fourth to the third power times k squared to the third power times m to the seventh to the third power. And when I actually impose those powers on everything, I've got 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27, j to the twelfth, k to the sixth, m to the twenty-first. All right, last but not least, I'm going to combine things that are alike. 16 and 27 are both regular numbers. 16 times 27 gives me 432. Okay, j to the 12th times j to the 12th. Here's our product of powers rule. So what do we do with those exponents? You got it. Add them up. That's going to give us j 
to the 24th power. k to the 4th times k to the 6th. Add up those exponents, k to the 10th. m to the 36th times m to the 21st. Same base number being multiplied together. We keep that base, add the exponents, and we get m to the 57th power. That is some serious power, people. All right, good luck with this.